A study looking at data from 500,000 people found that consuming a 25 gram serving of processed meat a day, the equivalent to just one rasher of bacon, is associated with a 44% increased risk of developing dementia. After this research came out, a survey was conducted that included 15,000 people that asked, in light of this research, are you prepared to give up your bacon sandwich? And worryingly, 76% of people said no. By 2050, an estimated 135.5 million people worldwide will have dementia. Two doctors who are working to drastically reduce this number are Dr. Dean and Dr. Aisha Shazai. They've created a list of nine foods that can protect the brain from cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, dementia and stroke, called the Neuro9. So let's hear what these foods are. Neuro nine. And these are nine foods that if you include on a daily basis, the chances of one having neurodegenerative diseases of the brain like Alzheimer's uh, or neurovascular ones like stroke is very, very low. The first food that is incredibly healthy are greens. Greens are probably the healthiest foods in the world because they are packed with fiber, phytonutrients, different minerals and vitamins that are good for our mind, for our gut health. And if you include greens in your daily meals, uh, the chances of Alzheimer's disease is reduced significantly and been studied in multiple databases in the Women's Health Initiative, in the Northern Manhattan study, Framingham study as well. The darker, the better. So green leafy vegetables like Swiss chard, spinach or collard greens. You know, I have some lettuce and some spring mix here, uh, but you know, whatever green that people can get, lettuce even is is great and then the second one are beans beans or lentils legumes are clean sources of plant-based proteins that don't harm our brain complex carbohydrates that feeds our gut bacteria that provides glucose which is the preferred fuel for the brain in a beautiful way we're not against canned uh, beans but making sure that they don't have salt because salt is the biggest enemy for blood pressure for vascular health and for those who've read this whole crazy other book that said, talks about lectins. Oh. Don't have to worry about lectins. Yeah. It's, it's a ridiculous concept. They're real, but they're not at all a threat to us. In fact, the opposite, the foods that have the highest lectins, which are beans, are also the healthiest. The third one is Christopher's vegetables. Broccoli, mm -hmm. cauliflower, kale, arugula, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. These are all cruciferous and they're so, so healthy for the brain. Broccoli specifically has a compound called sulforaphane. And now sulforaphane gets activated. You cut broccoli and leave it for a couple of hours. It is amazing for the vasculature, for our blood vessels, and it's a very potent antioxidant. And the brain being such an active organ, you know, working so hard, creating so many byproducts, sulforaphane and the compounds in cruciferous vegetables actually deactivate them. And then the fourth one is seeds. Now seeds like chia seeds and flax seeds, ground flax seeds, or sometimes hemp seeds are important sources of plant-based omega-3 fatty acids. The only type of fat that the brain needs is omega-3 fatty acids. You may have heard this from a lot of so-called influencers who say the brain is made up of fat and you need fat. You should eat fat because it needs it. That is such a false statement and it makes us so upset because the brain is made out of fat, but it's structural fat. There are no blobs of fat around your brain. The fat is embedded in the walls of the cells, in the coverings of their extensions, and it is replaced by the body. The liver makes enough cholesterol. We don't need saturated fats. As a matter of fact, saturated fat never even crosses the blood-brain barrier, which is a very tight junction. If we eat a lot of fat, it actually damages the arteries in our brain. It causes microvascular disease, what we call white matter disease. But there's a little bit of more nuance in the omega-3 story. But if you're getting it just from plants, transition from ALA to EPA to DHA is a little complex. The enzyme is an overwhelmed, poor, overwhelmed enzyme that needs help because that enzyme is also being used in the omega-6 pathway. So the way to make it more efficient is lower your omega-6 content, which is processed foods and fatty foods, and then increase your omega-3, which is chia and flaxseed and, and walnuts. And also don't tax your liver. Don't drink alcohol. No alcohol. Yeah. yeah. So by doing that, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you're worried about not being able to get enough omega-3, then sub-supplement algae-based is fine. 
But other than that, you can actually get it from food, but you have to be extra aware of the relationship. Nuts. So nuts, in multiple studies, again, it's the replacement of saturated fats with unsaturated fat that seems to be very important. So uh, nuts in small amounts, especially walnuts, is very good for the brain. You know, a few walnuts to about, you know, a handful is more than enough to include on your salads, maybe in your dressings. Uh, it tastes really good, and it's uh, that good kind of fat that the brain can enjoy and thrive. On. The next one is berries. Berries are so, so healthy because they're a great source of antioxidants, anti-inflammatory agents. And there was a study uh, in the nurse's health study where women who consumed at least half a cup of blueberries um, every day, they reduced their risk of Alzheimer's disease specifically to a great extent. And then we have our herbs and spices. I have some turmeric, some paprika, some dried oregano, cumin, but you can, you know, get whatever you want. Pound for pound. These spices have a lot of anti-inflammatory agents in them that are very, very good. There are four processes that we identify for brain health. Inflammation, oxidation, lipid or fat dysregulation and glucose or sugar dysregulation. Herbs and spices seem to affect all of those processes. Then the last one that we included was tea. Tea, specifically green tea and herbal teas. The catechins and some compounds that are in tea can be very, very helpful and it can um, improve the vasculature and provide antioxidants and anti-inflammatory agents again. For people who are very sensitive to caffeine though, they have to be very careful and you get the same kind of anti-inflammatory agents from decaffeinated tea. So decaf green tea, decaf black tea. Um, of course, herbal teas are amazing. So including those are great. They accidentally missed off the list whole grains. So number nine is whole grains. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.